Welcome to everyone joining us for the On The Line segment. We do have Justin Snaith on the line. Thanks very much for joining us on the line, Justin. How's things going in Cape Town? Great, Sheldon. Thanks for having me. And uh, yes, no, all going great. It's been, uh, we had a little bit of rain in the week, which might even the track out a little bit, but uh, certainly the wind has come up. So <clears throat> could give the front runners a little bit of a hard time coming into the straight, but uh, so the, the wind prediction is probably a little bit of a mild wind in the earlier part of the day. And then as the day goes on, uh, we expect the wind to pick up. Now, from a trainer's perspective, it's a long process. A lot of hard work goes into the, the day's racing, the build-up, everything going according to plan at this stage? Yeah, Sheldon, I think um, the King's Plate was a, a big wake-up call for us. Um, I, I, look, we... We contested just about every race in the finish, but um, I thought we missed out on a few of the big races, and uh, we didn't take the the bad day that well, and we've come out uh, what I hope will be on Saturday, firing on all cylinders. Very much what happened on July Day for us, and then we came back on Gold Cup Day. So very much the same situation. <clears throat> I think we have we may not have na nailed La Moran's King's Plate Day, but I think we've nailed um, uh, this uh, midday coming up tomorrow. Well, as they say, you can't keep a good man down, so let's hope you rise to the occasion. And just looking at the number of runners that you got on the day, you bringing out the A, B, and C team on a lighter note. Yeah, very much so. Um, these are days that certainly count. It's, uh, do you remember you, what you, you, you most all know is that my client base is majority of foreigners, so this is the time of the year now that COVID's over that they're all back in Cape Town. So I have quite a few clients that are out for the summer. And uh, this is a big day for us to showcase, um, you know, what we're all about. And then just to set the scene, what is the vibe at the moment in Cape Town? It must be absolutely phenomenal. Yes, look, interestingly, a lot of guys have come, actually come down from Natal. So I thought that was quite good. You know, a lot of people... Uh, Ravi Naidu, one of my clients, obviously cousin Casey's uh, owner, he said he flew up for a function in Natal, and then when he flew back, the, there were like 20 gentlemen on the plane, uh, you know, looking at their books and making all comments and stuff like that. So that was exciting to hear. And obviously, you know, when you arrive at the airport, Hollywood are all over the place handing out race cards. So that's a nice touch for people arriving. And obviously, the day itself looks like it's pretty much sold out. I saw um, all the tents and the party site and everything going up. It's like it used to be in the old days. Um, just action everywhere. There's not a part of the course that won't be utilized. So um, very exciting. Excellent. Let's get straight on to your runners so we don't keep you too long. you got some a lot of work to do back home there. So let's get straight on to race eight where you've got Rio Karari. I see you changing one or two things to try and get the best out of him. Yeah, look, uh, Grant, Grant's in that mood at the moment. I see a couple of his rides have all got equipment changes. Obviously, he's a very professional rider, Grant, and he's always looking for that little thing that might help him travel in a race and stuff like that. And he feels over the five furlong Rio, um, just to keep him a little bit in touch, as you know, sometimes he gets a little bit lost in the race and comes flying. Uh, he, he, the races that he's run into this race have been horrendous. Um, in my opinion, he's gone from his first run in a year, the race was changed at the last minute to accommodate the horses running the long runs in plate. So the race was changed from a th to a 1,200. So after a lengthy layoff, uh, he, he wasn't quite fit enough for the 1,000, let alone a 1,200. So he ran a little bit below par. And his next start, he was giving six kilos away to the field and still ran a great three lengths back. So... Um, yeah, we go back to a little bit more level weight. A lot of the horses are going to be um, a little bit worse off with him. And obviously, after such a long layoff, he is now fit and ready. So, um, I'm afraid to say the 20s have gone. I think the 14s are gone. And after this conversation, the 10s will be gone. So, um, he was value. I'm not too sure how much value you're going to get soon because obviously we, we think he's pretty much back. For me, it's, it's one of the weaker Cape Flyings that I've I've ever seen. It's You know, you've got a filly that is now back in the sprints like Princess Carla, who looks like one of the 
the massive dangers. And there are a couple three-year-olds that could run well here, but they may be better over 1,200. So I do think it's extremely open race. A lot of respect to the Joburg horses. They've got a very good strike rate in this race. And for me, um, I do think that um, I would not be surprised to see Rio coming through the field to run in the money. And if I've got him right, he could be right there. So um, for me, the best value of the day of any of my horses in any race. Well, thanks very much for that information for all the punters out there who still need to get on once you've had a listen to this, as you mentioned, the 20s, the 14s, the 10s could end up 5 to 1 race time and it could be a fairy tale ending for Rio Carrari. Now let's move on to the yeah, big and, race. You know, for the punter, there's nothing wrong with him, you know, so there's a lot of rooms that we gave him a good rest and brought him out and there's actually nothing wrong with him, so, you know, no reason why he shouldn't run well. 100%. Thanks very much. Let's move on to the big Perfect. race now where you you got Jet Dark. He's a horse of the highest caliber. He's taking on Kometi Ding again. He's going to be looking to reverse it. Yes, I think we've had a better, a better prep in this year round. I think we're, um, you know, Kometi Ding after Joe Berg and a few trains. It doesn't seem to be quite the you know, as good as he was, but in saying that, I still think, if you ask me who's the horse we've got to beat, I think it's the same horse again is Komodadun. I think he's our danger. I think the same horses are going to fight it out. I know there's so much confidence coming from the two, three old runners, um, and, you know, I understand that. They're very talented, but um, you're up in distance. They've never been the 2,000 before. Um, they've never taken on horses like this. So there's always that question mark. So talent versus experience will be very interesting. And uh, I've put a, quite a few other horses in this race just purely because I think there's a few horses that stand out and the rest of the field are all in the same boat for me. So I think there's two older horses and the rest literally on any day could finish third and fourth. Um, I do think of the three olds, I'd probably go with cousin Casey. Um, but extremely competitive race. I do think Jet Dark, the big thing is the draw. As you all know, you've seen him come from Stone last in so many races, and he's normally drawn nine. I think in the July, he was drawn 20 or 19 um, and had to come from Stone last around the field, giving weight. So it'll be very nice for the first time um, to actually be in a position that gives him every chance. Number eight, do it again, the champion of all champions. He's a nine-time winner looking to get his 10th victory under the belt. And it's not too often that you get a horse who's earned almost 10 million rand in his stakes career. No, for sure. The last horse I, I heard was Pocket Power was close to that. So to give you, you know, those horses are very rare. He's an extremely sound horse. He looks magnificent. Last race was a very disappointing run. Um, Bernard, for some reason... Chased him up to the front. I don't understand it. Um, but Bernard apologized afterwards. I mean, as you know, do it again. It's not a horse you want to chase too much. I mean, even in the, the Durban July, he was chased at the top of the straight and didn't enjoy that. Still ran fourth. He's in good form. He's very well. Um, certainly a horse that on his day can pop up and uh, run a big race. But um, he's a very happy horse. He's eight years old. He's the soundest thing I've ever trained. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we obviously looking at a, a last dip at the, uh, Hollywood Durban July. So obviously that is, this is all in prep for that. Now, just looking at the price, I can't believe it. 50 to one about a champion, do it again. That's unbelievable. I tell you what, there's some other horses that are short in the betting and you've got to be, you, you I don't know. You, I don't, I don't understand that. No. Okay, so we're on the same page there. Justin Snaith and I do it again. He's a champion of all champions. He's done what most can't do in 10 lifetimes. So let's give do it again yeah. a full go. Number nine, Nexus, a son of dynasty. He's seven years old and he's in the form of his life at the moment, Justin. He is. He's, he, he's just in that position. So all these horses ran close up last time out. And you know what? Eh? We all live the dream. And... Uh, you know, if Nexus was, so this is how you, some guys say, oh, Justin's running this and that. Sometimes I have to look at some in, in, a, in a different uh, way, and that is that if Nexus was trained by any other trainer in the Cape or in Joburg, would he be running in the Mets or not? Yes, he would be. 
Um, he's a horse that you saw how he won on um, uh, Durban July night. Uh, he's a horse that pops up, and I tell you what, he has never, ever been this well. They were laugh. I heard some of the um, the guys uh, mocking that a oh, seven-year-old can't win the Met. But the funny thing is, I've never had this horse sound <laughs> at seven. You know, it, so yeah, we're the only country in the world that can't seem to win big races with seven and eight-year-olds. It's it's mind blowing. In every part of the world, seven year olds and eight year olds win big races from Australia to Hong Kong to America. Um, it's something that I wish I hope we throw away horses too soon. I'm really hoping in the future that um, it's something that, you know, I mean, at seven years old, a horse should have, you know, everything it needs to to still contest big races. So he's doing really well. The story with the jockey, Pierre Stradham. Bernard couldn't commit to Almatana before the uh, Lamont King's Plate, so um, Ricky Maingard then confirmed Pierre Stratum for that, uh, Almatana, so that's how that came about. Bernard was always a little worried that Almatana might not get the 2000, so he didn't want to commit, and uh, obviously then we lost Pierre Stratum for Nexus, but uh, Moosey's got plenty followers. And, uh, you know, he's got the attitude and the arrogance to, to pop up and the BMT on, in a big race. Well, I like the way you said that. Just we move on to a horse like Warrior and then finally Pomp and Power. Just how they're doing in their work regime? Yeah, look, he never took to Natal. He, didn't, he had no joy there. And uh, I've got his temperament back. But the 19 draw is going to be... Uh, it, there's no, no... The one horse that didn't need a wide draw at 19 is Pomp and Power. He needs to be settled and, uh, you know, nursed in the race. Sadly, a 19 draw. Um, we're going to have to decide what to do. You can either go or don't go. So um, it's, it's something that we all discuss and, and play. But obviously that makes it very difficult for him. Let's move on to race number 10, which is a test of stamina. They do battle over 2,800 metres. Number eight is Salvatore Mundi. He's got an eight draw at this stage of the game. He finished second in his penultimate run and then fifth last time behind Navy Strength. He's the type of horse who could certainly be a very, very lively contender. Yeah, look, he's under the radar. He can get the distance. But this is a race that at level weights, uh, the horses are quite closely contested in the weights. You've got to look at the horses with the higher ratings. They far better off. A lot of these horses have been contesting handicaps up to now. I must say Salvador Mundi's gallop was out of the top draw. I didn't fancy him in this race, I'll be honest, until he galloped. So the gallop did give me a little bit more confidence. Silver Host is coming from a long uh, rest. His run in the Premiers was out of the top draw. He ran three wide the whole way, ran into the back of them. Certainly a horse that I think is going to give Nebras a run for his money. Nebras, the same, had a fantastic prep race. Sean is one of those trainers that you just can't keep down. Um, just when you think Sean's going quiet, he comes and pops up and shows why he's been champion trainer before. And I give it Nebras a lot of respect here, a lot of class. And I think the only horse in the race that can maybe step up will be Silver Host. He's doing very well at home. He's a class individual and you can expect a big run from him. Well, thank you very much, Justin. And as always, we appreciate your time and all the hard work you do behind the scenes, looking at the race meeting, looking forward to it. And when you arrive at the course in the morning, it's going to be absolutely spectacular, the show that's going to be put on. I can't wait. And like all the other trainers that are going into this meeting, I've never heard them so bullish. So this is going to be, there's going to be fireworks on Saturday. There's going to be a lot of dented images. <laughs> <laughs> this is what makes racing though. <laughs> oh, it's a big day. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. I really am. Well, great stuff. All the best, Justin, and thank you very much. Much appreciated. And the professional Absolute outfit pleasure, to you Sheldon. and the entire team. Thanks very much. Great. And I wish all your, your followers uh, that they all go home filthy rich. Thank you very much. That's Justin Snaith cool. on the Cheers. line and having a little bit of a banter and a chat. All looking forward to a wonderful day's racing ahead. And may the best of the best get into the winner's box. Mm -hmm.